Hello, this is The Kid at the Back. This is a visual novel where you're attending classes, and you notice that one day, there's a guy that sits in the back by himself. You decide to go up and say hello. It was many, and many a year ago, in a kingdom by the sea, that a maiden there lived, whom you may know, by the name of Annabel Lee. Day one, the beloved. And class dismissed. By our next meeting, I need a full report of the chosen poem. Everyone searched, got it? The classroom was then filled with a series of low yes ma'am and a few hums. Satisfied, your literature teacher packs up her things and went out of the classroom. Once she was out, the students went on a series of chitter and chatter. Others stood up dragging their chair as they prepared to head out for a lunch break. A slight yawn escaped your lips, your eyes gazed outside through the classroom windows. I really like the aesthetic of the background already. Like the little dot patterns here and there, it kind of reminds me of a couple of like very popular Japanese visual novels or JRPGs that I really like. The sky is starting to dim, the sun's rays blocked by the dark clouds looming. You curse under your breath, it's gonna rain. Just my luck, I didn't bother to bring an umbrella too. You sigh in irritation as you stood up from your seat. Suddenly, a tap on your shoulder interrupted your line of thought. You turn your head towards the person, asking for your attention. Your eyes meet with cobalt blue ones, they stare straight into your own orbs. A brow raised as if in slight irritation, she's clearly impatient. Impatient for what? She's hot. She's very pretty. Did you hear me? Do you want to come with us for lunch? I mean, I know you don't really eat lunch and spend most of your time somewhere else, but you sure you're not going to eat? I mean, look at you. Your eye twitched from her words. You have no idea if that was out of concern for your well-being or if she's trying to bring you down. Either way, it stung you. Her style, especially the socks and the hair and the makeup, really reminds me of the Garu and Gunguro trends that were really popular in Japan in the early 2000s. I really like that trend. It was just, it was, it was really cool. You wrapped your arms around yourself, your insecurity rising up to your throat, trying to suffocate you. Brittany! Just then, a new and familiar voice broke your inner turmoil. Oh, that's right. That's really insensitive of you. Imagine if someone told you about how you look. Pro Ichabod, he's also hot. The class representative and one of your close friends. Heck, probably only one of your friends that you really admire. I love the sprite style. The shadow is really nice. And the white outline as well. And maybe have a tiny crush on. Brittany only huffed and looked away from Crow's spiteful gaze as he turns his attention to you. Crow gives you a small smile while handing something out to you. You look down to see it. It was your ID. You dropped this, by the way. You grabbed your ID and looked down to see. Your name is... My name... Last name... The ID shows my name, Uni Winterborn, along with my pronouns. Boop. You looked at the ID one more time and double-checked if it's correct. Name, Uni Winterborn, pronouns, she, her. Yes. You took your ID back from Crow and gave him a small thank you. He gave you a close smile, muttering a no problem as he went back to Brittany's side where the rest of his friends are. So? Are you coming with us or not? Brittany said, clearly getting impatient by the second, a hand on her hip while waiting for your response. You then decided to... Mm, I might stick to the rooftop actually. A tick of irritation formed on your forehead before huffing out the anger. Actually, I was feeling somewhere else today, so no thanks, you and your group can go on ahead. Brittany raised an eyebrow before shrugging her shoulders. Suit yourself, fun. She snapped her fingers before turning around and heading out with the rest of her friends. In all honesty, you have no idea where to go despite the school being very notorious and had so many facilities. You were thankful you got accepted here in the first place through your scholarship. But making friends in this forsaken school is on a whole new level. You sighed and looked out through the classroom windows at the darkening sky. Maybe the smell and the sound of the incoming rain might help ease the burning feeling within you. With a goal in mind, you went to the rooftop. The rooftop is off limits, but they don't often bother to even lock it up, much less barricade it. 
Once you got in, you took a seat on the pavement under a small shade as droplets of rain slowly descend down from the sky. Just then, you hear footsteps to your right. A few mutters of words were heard. Curiosity nagged you. You went to the corner where the sound came from, and there stood what seemed to be a student with bluish green hair. Aww, they're so pretty. Oh, I love them. They're in a call. Their steps in a cycle going back and forth as he talks to whoever he's talking to behind his flip phone. His other hand grips his hair, clearly irritated to whoever he's talking to. He flipped his flip phone closed and lets out a sigh. Suddenly, his body froze. The drastic change in his demeanor sent chills down your spine. I can see you, you know. Show yourself. You slowly inch forward, showing yourself to the strange student. The more you look at his face, the more he seemed familiar. And judging from his facial expression, he was thinking the same thing. How much did you hear? I only heard you curse, and nothing else. He answered with honesty. He raised a brow trying to look at your face, see if you're telling the truth. He sighed and shook his head. Either way, it's rude to eavesdrop on someone's conversation. I told you, I just got here. You burrow your eyebrows, and he just chuckled acting as if it's just silly teasing. You seem familiar. Let me remember. He closed his eyes, a hand on his chin, and does a thinking motion like those cartoon detectives in TV shows. Yinny Winterborn from art class, correct? The student smiled in glee. That's great. That means you'd be willing to help me with something. It does? Wait, what? I'm Hugo, by the way. You see, I won't be able to make it to the next class, and I kind of promised my partner for the class that I'll be there. Hugo chuckled, a sweat drop forming on his cheek, and you gave him a look. Seriously? But I'll make it up to you, I promise. I'm quite close to the student council and happen to know a few connections. I might be able to refer you if you'd like. He says with a wink and a nudge, wanting you to take the offer. That does seem like a good offer, can help lessen your expenses and have a higher discount on your scholarship. And judging from his looks, it doesn't even seem like you have a choice. With a sigh, you accepted his offer. Hugo gave you a pat on the back as if you guys had been long old friends before escorting you out of the rooftop with him in tow. The school bell rings, indicating the start of the next class. What have I gotten myself into? He just barely made it to your next class, your professor already on his desk, and was slowly bringing out their tools for the lesson of the day. He looked across the room, paintbrushes by the shelves, the week's featured artwork with a few blank canvases hidden in a shelf. You sigh as you try to look around for whoever the sole person the guy from the rooftop was talking about until it hit you. I don't even know what the sole guy even looks like. You groaned and took your seat by the window. Maybe you'll find out once your professor starts his class. I'll be assigning each one with a partner to work with for the upcoming weeks. You and your partner will be doing three different artworks that need to be submitted by the deadline. Hope you all got a partner already by this time. Now, I want you all to go to your designated partners before I start explaining your tasks. Shit. You mumbled under your breath. This is what you get for not attending his class last time. You don't have a partner. Luckily, you're not the only one. You looked around trying to spot someone who doesn't have a partner yet since the guy from the rooftop clearly said they were supposed to be partners. Just your lucky day, you guess? You were forced out of your seat since your seatmate's partner will be occupying it for the class. Unlike the rest of the class scurrying around to meet their partner, there was one who wasn't moving from his seat. He went to where he was situated at, seeming to be reading a book and you let out a small cough to attract his attention. <clears throat> he closed his book and looked up at you. Oh my god, he's so hot. Oh, I love his hair and the eyes. Oh, he's adorable. He kind of reminds me of Blade from Honkai Star Rail, and I've been really obsessed with Honkai lately. Seems like you're a bit lost there. Do you have a partner? No. Well, just your luck then. <laughs> Me neither. So, do you want to be partners? Sure, why not? 
He took the vacant seat right beside him, his book now tucked away, and on his desk is now a pen and a piece of paper, seemingly ready to take notes. Hey, I never got to know your name. It's not quite important. Well, I should at least know what to call you instead of green streaked hair guy. Oh, he's so cute. He raised a brow at your silly nickname you just gave him, before slightly shaking his head. Sullivan, Rumancia. But just call me Sol. Sol. Sol means sun or brightness, right? Sol nodded. I guess you can say that. I like it. It's a unique name. Thanks. Well, I'm Uni Winterborn. Nice to finally know your name, Sol. Oh my god, he's so cute when he smiles. Sol nodded with a small smile before returning his attention back to the professor. For this term, I want you and your partner to pass three art pieces. First one will be a portrait of your partner, strictly on paper with charcoal as a medium. He groaned. Boomer art teachers. Your professor then proceeds to give the other two tasks before leaving you and the rest of the class to do your tasks for the day. Everyone started talking with their partners, some taking out their needed materials as the other one poses. He turned to see Sol as he takes out his own charcoal pencil and his sketch pad for the class. I gotta tell you right now, Sol, I'm not that good at art. I'm still quite a beginner. So you got nothing to worry about. My usual partner isn't much of an artist either. Your usual partner? Oh, yeah. I already had an assigned partner for this class. Uh, he last minute ditched me for some important family business. He never tells me though. And I'm not the type to pry, either. Does your friend go by the name Hugo, perhaps? Yeah, how'd you know? I met him during lunch, he was at the rooftop. Typical of him. Sorry you got dragged into his mess of taking his place. You shook your head, telling him that you don't mind one bit. Then he keeps talking, as if he's scolding the green-haired lad back in the rooftop like a little brother. It was actually cute. He slowly took out your sketch pad and started drawing Sol's different expressions as he talks. Would you believe me if I tell you that guy is one of the top students in the entire class yet is always missing in action? Really now, he doesn't seem to be that type of guy. Which part, being a top student or always missing in action? Sol's brow raised and he shrugged as he kept on sketching his face. Sol, however, caught up to what you were doing and stood up from his seat and tried to pry your sketchbook out of your hands. Were you drawing me this entire time? N no? Liar. I thought I was supposed to be the one drawing you, not the other way around. He sat back on his seat and crossed his arms. His eyes narrowed while he bit his lower lip. That's so cute. Oh, come on. It's not that big of a deal, Sol. Plus, you look really cute. Oh my god, the blush. Oh, I love him. Sol's cheeks turned red and eyes popped wide open from your comment and looked away. The grip on his arm tightened as he wrinkled his long sleeves. Did he just whisper something? Oh yeah, he whispered, not as cute as you. Oh, You said something? Nothing. You tilted your head to the side. You sure mumble a lot. It's a habit. I'm not used to talking a lot. You told him about your friend Hugo. You seem to be fond of him regardless. Sol just sighed and rubbed his nape, his expression relaxing a bit. I owe him a lot, that's all. Enough about Hugo though. Let's continue on with our task. Alright, alright. And I'm drawing, and that's final. You pouted. Alright, grumpy. As he drew, you couldn't help but stare at his face. From the bandage on his cheek and judging from how much it's covering half his face, it's quite a large bruise. You fell down the stairs or something? What makes you say that? He asked, and you pointed at his wound on his cheek with your pencil. Well, you can say that. Nothing for you to worry about, though. You weren't sure if you wanted to pry more into the conversation, much less want to know what exactly happened. So 
because from the way he talked, it doesn't seem like he fell. Aww. But that's a story for another day. I hope it gets better soon. Thanks. Sol managed to sketch up your portrait, but was caught up with the bell eventually, not being able to finish on time. He tried to pry off your sketch pad from your hands, however, trying to get rid of the doodles you made of him during his little rant about his friend. But you chucked your sketch pad in your bag before he could get his hands on it. Sol eventually gave up and started packing as well. You and him went to the exit door of the classroom and continued on in the hallway. Do you have a phone? We should exchange numbers and update each other so we can do the next two tasks. Sol then takes out his own phone and asks for your number. You recite it out and he inputs it in his phone. Let me try and send you a message. You nodded and looked at your phone screen to see a new notification from an unknown number. This must be Sol's. Sup? Oh, look at his little avatar. That's so cute. Oh, You type so differently from how you look. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. He chuckled and he rolled his eyes. You're a good guy, Sol. How about we hang out again tomorrow? By your request, Sol's eyes widen in disbelief. He lets out a breath that he was somehow holding before sighing. Uh, of course, I'll see you tomorrow then. He nodded and walked off, giving him a wave goodbye, him returning with his own small wave. As you walk through the hallway, your eyes caught onto something on the nearby bulletin board. A poster was plastered on the large board. A Hallow's Ball. Come enjoy the festive spirit of Hallow's Eve. A Halloween party, huh? By the time you arrived at your small apartment, it was already past 5pm. You stretched out your arms and let out a small groan. You locked your doors and decided to just order takeout for dinner. God, I am loving the background aesthetic. I really like the fact that they chose to go with this. I think it complements the style of the game really, really well. You went to your living room and plopped down on the couch and took out your phone. Scrolling through until a ping notified you of a new message. Ooh, who's Daryl? Anyone want to go to the Halloween party this Friday? It's going to be awesome. Aren't we all a bit too old for costume parties? Is it required? Oh, you two are no fun at all. I won't go if it's not a school requirement, much less a waste of my time. Is it? No, it isn't. But it'll be a great and fun experience for all of us. I mean, we should loosen up a bit, you know? I agree with Crow. Count me in. Pass. I've got more important things to do than that party. Now, will you excuse me? I'll be doing my leftover task for tonight. Geo has gone offline. Sheesh, stick in the mud as usual. How about you, Yuni? Me. You join him? It'll be fun. You're honestly surprised they somehow remembered you. Checking your calendar through your phone, you didn't you didn't seem to have any plans in the near future. Or plans at all. You'd like to just spend your time in your apartment alone. I mean, sure? That's great to hear. Pro seems happy about it. You giggle. This also reminds you of something. Or rather, someone. Opening another chat, you tapped in Sol's newly added contact and sent him a message by sending the image of the same poster Daryl sent. A Halloween party? Hosted by the school? Yeah. I'm not quite into parties. Oh. Oh, well, that's alright. Just asking, that's all. Just asking, that's all. Wait, if you're coming, then I'm coming as well. Really? Really? Do you plan on dressing up? I don't know. Do you? I mean, it's a costume party, so why not? I'll try to think of something then. You swear you can feel the smile behind those words. With a quick word of goodbye, you set your phone down when you heard your doorbell. That must be the food delivery. Afterwards, you ate your dinner and prepared yourself for bed. You thought of today and the events that occurred, and meeting Sol, of course. He's a really nice guy. It's a wonder how I've never met him despite sharing a single class with him. Oh well. 
You entered your bedroom, letting out a big yawn as you stretched your body. You turned to your laundry slowly piling up and scratch your head. We'll probably do laundry tomorrow. But for now, you plop yourself on the soft cushions of your bed, getting into a comfortable position and slowly dozing off as you close your eyes, embracing sleep as the night goes. <sighs> oh, oh wait, is he doing it? Oh, oh dear. End of day one. Oh, I love the fact that we got to experience day one. Hang on, I want to pick some of the other choices. Because you were able to choose to go and sit with them. Uh, like with the group, as opposed to go to the rooftop. Alright, let's go with them. Brittany hummed a sound of content before turning her heel and heading towards the classroom's exit. In tow with her is four other people, one being Crow. Crow looks back at you by the door, waiting for you. He caught up with them and met eyes with Crow again. There was something in his gaze that sends a shiver down your spine. Oh, he's hot. He quickly averted your eyes once he got out, with Crow following behind you in the group, and the group headed towards the school's cafeteria. The cafeteria was loud, students lining up to grab today's school lunch while the rest went to a table with their packed lunches. So, Yinny, do you want to come with us to get the school's food for the day, or do you want to go grab a table with the others? Brittany said, her gaze fixated on you. Aww, everyone's so cute. Brittany along with Crow and a girl with an orange uniform seem to be grabbing school lunch. Oh my god, who are these two? Jeez. Oh, they're so gorgeous. Especially, oh, this was a Geo from the text. And I'm assuming this was Daryl? Meanwhile, the two guys with them have their own packed lunch about to head off to find a seat for the group. You decide that you... Mm, buy your lunch. Oh, bye. Alright then. Daryl, Gio, go find us some seats while we line up. The jock you assume was named Daryl waved Brittany away and turned around with the other male named Gio to find a seat. His arm wrapped around his shoulder while Gio was clearly a bit annoyed at the gesture. Come on, Jess. Let's get in line. Yes, of course. You go first, Brit. The girl Brittany called out, Igus was Jess, followed her behind. Let's get in line before more people start piling up. We don't want to get the bad stuff for lunch. He shuddered at the thought, remembering the leftovers from the school cafeteria. He nodded and went with Crow, and getting in line with the rest of the students. In the line, Crow turned his attention back to you. I'm glad you're able to hang around with us, Eddie. Even if it's most of the time. No problem. No problem, Crow. Maybe I just need a change of scenery, that's all. Crow just chuckled before picking his food behind the counter, paying for it afterwards as he did the same. You weren't really that hungry and just bought a sandwich and a juice that you regularly buy whenever you find the time to spend your lunch break here. Brittany was already waiting for the rest of you, tray in hand. Once everyone got their food, Brittany turned ahead and walked towards where Daryl and Gio were seated. Move your ass aside, Daryl. I'm sitting there. A loud gasp escaped through Brittany's lips. Oh wait, what happened? Her mouth opened in shock with the food that was on her tray now splattered across her white uniform. Brittany! I'm sorry about that. You should have watched where you were going back there. Brittany's eyes met with the person responsible. A group of girls, definitely bullies, and judging from Brittany's face filled with rage, they seem to know each other. Britt, are you alright? We should get yourself clean. You. Fucking bitch. This is my only clean uniform, how fucking dare you? Oh, look at Miss Claire all flared up. Careful, Miss Sweetie. You'll get wrinkles. It's not like you're all ugly already. And by ugly, this is getting ugly quite fast. Everyone's gazes were on the group of girls, some taking out their phones, either taking pictures or started recording. Crow tried to come in between them to stop the fight, but he wasn't fast enough. Splat. The next thing we knew, another loud gasp was heard. A wide smile was on Brittany's face, food on the mean girl's white uniform as well. Yeah, let's fucking go, get her! 
Jess's face filled with shock as the food from her tray is gone. Take that, shit stain. Yeah, good Brittany. How dare you? Food fight! Yay! <laughs> Next thing everyone knows, the cafeteria is filled with rowdy students and food flying across the arena. Are those trays? Oh, no! My noggin! A sudden wave of pain was felt on your head, your whole face. And the last thing you saw was Crow calling out your name before passing out. Oh no! Uh, where am I? Oh, you're awake, thank goodness. Bro? You tried to sit up, but the sudden pain that went through your head stopped you. Bro gently pushed you back down on what seems to be a bed before taking a seat beside it. The nurse already bandaged your head. Don't push yourself. Ugh. What happened? Oh... After Daryl started that mess of a food fight, the principal was called in to stop it. Daryl got lucky enough to escape when he did. Gio was nowhere to be seen. As for Brittany, what about her? Well, Jess helped her out to grab a new uniform from the principal's office. Then, why does my head hurt so much? Someone somehow threw a tray and you were unfortunate enough to get hit by it. Thankfully, I got you out of there before it got ugly. Thanks, Crow. I owe you one. Don't mention it. Anyway, it's a quarter near one in the afternoon. I should probably head out to my next class. You should stay here until the nurse gets back. You'll be alright alone here, right? No. Yes, you can... you can go ahead. You sure? Yes, I'll be fine, Crow. You've done enough for me today. You gave him a small smile, but he did not return it. Crow then squeezed your hand, quite hesitant of letting go before he does. Oh, that's so cute. Crow's such a sweetie. You miss it as soon as he lets go. He stood up from his seat, but not before giving you a smile and left the infirmary. You groan and lay back down on the bed, feeling the bandage on your head. At least the pain is slowly dying a bit. I hope it didn't leave a mark on my hair. Just then, you hear the door open, the nurse's voice echoing through the room as the clicking of her heels get louder as she draws closer. Oh, it's so... Oh, oh he doesn't have his... Wait, he doesn't have his bandage this time, but he's got a bleeding hand. Oh, my poor baby. The school nurse entered and following her was a tall student dressed in black. He seemed to be holding onto his left hand. And there you can clearly see a streak of red flowing. You should be thankful you didn't cut a vein. How were they able to get past with that pocket knife in the first place? The nurse sighed. Seems like she's got her hands full with another student. The latter, however, didn't say anything, but lets out a small hiss when the nurse dabbed antibacterial on his wound. You sat up slowly, careful not to hit your head on anything, before sitting up and looking at the student and the nurse. Your eyes meet with reddish-orange ones as the nurse finishes wrapping up around his wound, a blotch of red slowly seeping out and staining the once white bandage. His eyes still on you. Ah, you're finally awake, Miss Winterborn. <laughs> so my username, well my last name that I use in all the dating sims that require a, a surname is a Skyrim reference to the... Ah, uh, you're finally awake, just kind of reminds you of the, hey, you, you're finally awake. The nurse finally notices your presence. She took out some painkillers from one of the cabinets and gave some to you. Take these to lessen the pain. You're both free to get back to your class or you can stay here and recover. I'll go back. Thanks for patching me up, nurse. The boy said before heading out to the infirmary. The nurse just shook her head before returning her attention to you. You can take some extra pills, but not too much. You can come back here if you ever feel anything wrong, Miss Winterborn. Take care now. You thank the nurse before heading out of the infirmary and onto your next class. You just barely made it to your next class. The professor already on his desk and was slowly bringing out their tools for the lesson of the day. You looked around the classroom before your eyes landed on familiar red ones. It's the guy from the clinic. How come I just noticed his presence just now? 
Has he always been a part of the same art class as me? And judging from his face, the bandage doesn't seem to be much of a problem to him. You shook your head and took your seat. I'll be assigning each one with a partner to work with for the upcoming weeks. You and your partner will be doing three different artworks that need to be submitted by the deadline. Hope you all got a partner already by this time. Now, I want you to all go to your designated partners before I start explaining the task. Yeah, I think this is just the same as the other one. I'll skip over to when he starts talking to us though. Yeah, it's just the same. What if I pick this option? Your name contradicts with your whole glam, not gonna lie. Soul looked away, scratching his cheek. Yes, sir. Not really the jolly type. Hugo's more of that. Well, I'm Uni Winterborn. Nice to finally know your name, Soul. I'll pick some different choices this time. I'll say we're pretty great at art. Oh? Then surprise me. Sorry I can't draw you back because of this damned injury. No, don't worry about it. You're excused, and I don't want you to stress your hand over this. He took out your sketch pad and your pencil and worked with his portrait with determination, his eyes never leaving your face. He would often look up to see his features, taking note of every curve, a blush occasionally invading his cheeks as he tries his best not to look away while you worked. While you were sketching, you can't help but avert your eyes on his bandaged hand from time to time. Seems like you're quite curious to know what happened to this, huh? And you won't slip with it either. You froze when he caught you red-handed, just like the red seeping out of the bandage. You stopped drawing. Sorry, that was rude of me. It's fine. This is just the usual for me. I've gotten worse injuries than this. Oh, poor boy. You raise a brow at that. Not the worse? If you don't mind me asking, what happened? He paused and averted his eyes, but opens up to speak. Nothing much. Was minding my own business. Got assaulted. Had to defend myself. He talked as if it's just another normal Monday for him. Your eyes furrowed. He noticed and just chuckled. <laughs> no need to worry about me. All that matters is that I'm still here. He didn't say anything, however. Continuing on with the drawing, your movement's slow and now refusing to look at his injured hand. The school is way more fucked up than I thought it would be. Oh, poor soul. That poor sweet boy. The bell rang, and sadly, he weren't done with his portrait yet. Can I see it? Wait. Hmm? I mean, I'm not finished yet. I'll show it to you once I'm done with it. Plus, you still need to draw me once your injury gets better. You close your sketch pad and fix your things. Sol shrugged and agreed as he fixes his own. The rest of the class went out of the classroom along with you and Sol as you continue on in the hallway. Do you have a phone? We should exchange numbers and update each other so we can do the next two more tasks. Sol then takes out his own phone and asks for your number. He recited out as he inputs it into his phone. Yeah, so this is the same as well. I'm gonna see if um the ending is different for this round, but I do like when he blushes and his eyes widen. When you say that he's a good guy. Oh, I just wanna give him a hug so badly. Yeah, so the rest of um the rest of everything is still the same. Yeah, because we just go through the text messages and then we fall asleep and it ends day one. I haven't been able to get any of the CGs though. They all seem to be locked for me. I'm gonna try and see if I can get any of them. Let me try and actually, let me try and pick the third option where we go to the library. No, thank you. I think I'll head to the library today. Brittany just gave a low huff, not saying anything. She turned around with four of her friends following her lead, one of them being Crow. Alright, let's get to the library. The hallway was rowdy and filled with a mix of sweaty and tired young adults. Some on their way to their next class while the rest went to the cafeteria's direction. And of course, there were some who were going the same direction as you. The library door is beyond your reach, a smile etched on your face, already missing the smell of books. You opened the doors and you were hit by the smell of coffee and books. You went to your usual spot in the library, the one by the large window near the cafe section. The fancy thing about your university is that their library is a library cafe. Students can get coffee as early in the morning up until the afternoon. It's a huge hit among the students, 
and you can't seem to blame them. Puffy feels every college student's soul is especially getting worked down. This is me when I was in uni. Like, I didn't- I don't drink coffee because I am, you know, uh, unable to handle caffeine like a baby. But I used to just sit in the library in my spare time and just constantly read Junji Ito. As you make your way to the usual spot, you hold it when a person suddenly took a seat on the spot. You groan. Just great. What should I do about this? Just take the seat beside him. At the cost of the comfort of your favorite spot, you don't want to deal with him, nor want to engage in a conversation. Oh, yeah, you get to meet Sol early if you go to the library. I love that. You walk towards where he's at, him not minding your presence, and took the seat right next to him. Oh, he's got no injuries this time. That's good. He pays you no mind as you place your things down and took out your laptop preparing to write down a head start of your report. It was quiet, and your attention was just solely focused on the work before you, while the guy beside you continued on with his book. The sound of him flipping through was oddly comforting. Time passed by, and the next thing you know, there was only a few students left in the library. The guy beside you closed his book, chucked it in his bag, and left the library. You turned to look up at the library's large clock. A few minutes before your next class. You stopped writing down and turned off your laptop and placed all of your things in your bag before heading out of the library as you quickly rushed to make it to your next class. Okay, so this is the art class again. Okay, you quickly went to your seat. You suddenly felt as if someone is staring at you, drilling holes through the back of your head. You turned around but saw no one, everyone just simply minding their own business. You shrugged it off and returned your gaze to your professor. Yeah, so he assigns you the partner here, except this time I think Sol stares at you, as opposed to you recognizing him or you approaching him because you don't have a partner. Ah, yeah, so you go up to him afterwards anyway. Yeah, his responses are different here as well. So if you go, I'm not that good at art, everyone starts somewhere. Would you like me to draw you first then? If it's not a problem, not at all. With that, Sol takes out his own sketchbook and pencil sitting upright and facing you. You straighten up your back sitting properly as if you're about to take an ID picture. Is this okay? Just relax your shoulders, you'll be fine. Just be natural. Oh, okay. Oh my god, he's so cute. Aww. Sol leaned in, his face a few inches near yours, almost feeling his minty breath. Oh my god, he's got closer help. He raised his hand and brushed a strand of your hair away from your face and tucked it behind your ear. There, this was in the way. You were sure you were as bright as a cherry by now. He didn't say anything else as Sol begins his sketch, his eyes hopping from the paper to your face. And you swear every time you meet his gaze, your heartbeat quickens. He's still my beating heart. And you deal with that for the rest of the class. God, I would die. Before you knew it, the class ends. Everyone was packing their things. Sol sadly isn't done with your portrait, which you were dying to see. But he said he's going to keep it a secret until he finishes it. You better not make me look funny. What makes you think that? Why you? I'm kidding. His hand then tried to reach out to your face as if wanting to cup your cheek. Oh my god, please. But then stopped midway. No! You're so pretty. Oh my god. Oh, I love him. Did you say something, Sol? Nothing. Do you have a phone? We should exchange numbers. Yeah, so I think this is still the same ending. Because yeah, you ask him to hang out again and then he gets flustered. I'm going to try and see if we can get the other CGs. Let's head to the library again this time. And then we ask him to move from your seat. That's your seat. And no one else is going to take it away from you and your comfort. He puffed out your chest and went to the person where your rightful spot should be. I feel mean. It's not my spot, it's first come first serve. He was reading a book, way too focused on it. He didn't notice your presence for a short while. <clears throat> he faked a cough. This seemed to catch his attention. Hmm? Um, you're in my seat. Can I have it back? He looks up from the book he's reading and you're met with piercing, reddish eyes. Eye bags right under it, as if he's never gotten a wink of sleep for a week. Oh god, man after my own heart. I love my favorite aesthetic. For 2D men is black hair and dark eye circles. You twiddled your thumbs, your heart thumping from your chest as you return his gaze, ending in some sort of stare down. He raised a brow before looking around, under the table, on the seat, 
head even under his book before turning back to you. I don't see your name anywhere. He's so sassy. A vein tightened. Oh, so he's trying to be a smart ass, huh? Your cheeks puffed and he just gave a small chuckle before closing his book and placed it down on the table. I'll give you a seat back, but what can you offer in exchange? Oh? Um, we have the option of giving him something intimate? Coffee or just give- let's try this one. What? You want a hug or something? He raised a brow at you, a slight tilt to his head, wondering what you were trying to imply. Now that I have a good look at him, he actually looks kind of cute. Now wait, what am I saying? Shaking your head, ignoring your cheeks heating up, you patted your temples trying to get rid of the thoughts. Minding you no more, the guy returned his attention to the book in his hands. A groan escaped your mouth, and with a pout you set your things down and sat on the chair next to him. It was quiet, and your attention was just solely focused on the work before you. While the guy beside you continued with his book, the sound of him flipping through was oddly comforting. Okay, so he doesn't talk to you. So I think the next time we speak is at the class again. Hmm. Do we get a CG for this one? Okay, so if he draws you, there's one CG. What if we draw him? I'd love to see some of your works then. So, would you like me to draw my portrait first? Sure. Sure. Wait, let me get my things. You took out your sketch pad and a charcoal pencil as Sol relaxes on his seat. Would you like me to pose or... Hmm. Maybe do a three-quarter angle pose? Alright. Oh, he's so pretty. Your eyes scan his face. The more you look at him, the more you notice some of his features. His cheekbone, his lips with two piercings, his thick eyebrows, the way his hair settles down on his shoulders. I would like to pull the hair. I mean what? And his reddish-orange eyes. He's actually quite handsome. Oh, he is quite handsome. For a moment, you just stare at his eyes, he noticed and stares back, his pupils dilating before he realizes he was staring. Oh, look at that little pout. Heat rises to his cheeks, and he quickly averted his head away. Hey, I, eyes on me. S sorry, I'm not used to being stared at for that long. Relax, it's just me, plus you stare at my boring face after I'm done with your portrait. Your face isn't boring. I actually think you look beautiful. Oh, <laughs> He says without even thinking twice. His eyes met yours, half-lidded, and his pupils were wide. Now it's your turn to turn red. Oh yeah. Oh, I love him so much. He's like exactly my type. You hid your face behind your sketch pad and whacked him with your charcoal pencil. Stop saying stupid stuff and stay still. Sol just chuckled and stilled his movements, a hand on his chest and a smile on his face. You weren't done with your sketch, however the conversation kept repeating in your mind and made it hard for you to concentrate. And like hell you were going to show it to Sol. Come on, just a peek? It's not done yet. Boo. You chucked the sketch pad in your bag before Sol would grab a hold of it. You got it from your seat and headed out of the classroom. Sol coming close behind with his own bag as he leaves as well with the rest of the class. Alright, so yeah, so this bit is just the same, pretty much like all the time. Alright, let's try and do some other choices. Because there's the option to ask to give him coffee. How about coffee? You sure look like you need one at the moment. He chuckled. Alright, coffee it is then. He went back to reading his book and waving you off, awaiting his drink. You sigh as you went near the library's cafe counter. Next in line please. However, as you face the cashier before you, you curse under your breath. I forgot to ask what kind of coffee he likes. Fuck it. Whatever, I guess. Facing the cashier, you decided on. Why do I feel like he's the type to drink black coffee? Let's go with this. Black, please. Going for something strong for today? I won't judge. I like black too, especially to keep me awake. More like it's just a random guess. You gave the cashier the money while the barista behind prepares for your drink. Once your order was called up, you grabbed the drink of choice, thanking the barista and went back to the seat where the guy was, careful not to accidentally spill the contents of the drink and avoid passing students. And there you can see him still reading his book before looking up once he smelled the sweet aroma of coffee beans coming his way. Once you're beside him, you carefully placed down the cup beside him. He took it and held to his face. He took small sips from it, not saying anything, his eyes still glued to his book. So, no comment, huh? Well, there's your coffee. Are you moving aside or no? He looked up, thinking hard on your words. Alright. 
but I'm kind of liking this spot too, so you'll just have to deal with me sitting beside you. He nodded and he moved to take the seat right next to your now reserved spot. He took your seat, a smile on your face from your mini victory. He just rolled his eyes playfully before continuing on his book. He set your stuff down and start with your report for your literature class. Time passed by and lunch was nearing its end. You huffed out and double checked the work you've done so far on your laptop. I think that should do it. Satisfied, you start to pack up your things. While doing so, your seatmate started packing up his things as well, noticing his cup of coffee now empty. He then got out of his seat and walked away, not minding your presence as he exits. You hesitated for a short moment, before calling out to him before he could reach the library doors. Hey! He stopped in his tracks and turned around to look at you, a brow raised. What's your next class? What's your next class? Clearly not expecting you to ask, much less talk to him again, he paused before replying. Art class. Wait, for real? With Mr. Spring? He nodded. How come you never seen this guy throughout the semester? Sensing your confusion, he just scratched the back of his head. I don't really care if you've never seen me before. I barely go in class or make myself known either way. He sighed, irritation at the back of his throat at the idea. He probably got a warning to attend the class now, or he drops. He shook your head. But still, would you like to go to the next class with me? The huh? Where did he go? I guess he went ahead. He shrugged. Heading out of the library and onto your next class, expecting the green streaked haired male to be there. Class time! So this time he sits at the back of the class. Alright, and then we'll be assigned as his partner. Okay, so this one gets you a CG. This one also gives you the same one, I think. Can I unlock the other two? I still have two more CGs to get though. I want to try and get them. So I'm going to try and find somewhere else to sit. Because I've tried the other options in the other routes. And they haven't given me the last two CGs. You don't want to deal with strangers or anyone at all this very moment. Even if you want to be at your spot at the very moment. Looking around you decide to find a different seat. Sadly, the available ones you're able to see is the one next to the loud gossiping students. You swear, out of all the places to be, they have to be in the library. You decide to grab a book to avert your attention to something else. You don't feel like doing your research paper. You went to the fiction section. Tall bookshelves come into your view. Your fingers brush along the spines of the book, some old and some new. Thud. A thud caused the shelf to wobble a bit, nearly knocking a few books down. You click your tongue and try to take a peek through the bookshelves to see what's causing it. Well, look what we have here. It's Creep McGee. Wait, are they bullying Sol? What's wrong? Cat got your tongue? Right, another bullying situation. You sigh. Sometimes people never grew out of their high school phase. The poor guy didn't say anything as they were pinned to the bookshelf explaining the few shakes. Just then he muttered something under his breath. What did you say? Speak up, freak. Oh no! I said. Fuck. Off. Why, you little? You winced, and the redhead landed a blow on the boy before your eyes caught something glistening from the raven head bully's pocket. A pocket knife. How the fuck did he get in there with that? Let's see if you continue being a smartass once I cut your mouth. No way! I'm stopping them. I'm gonna stop them. You rushed out as quickly as you can across to where the bullies are. Stop! From the sound of your voice, the bullies halt in their movement and turn to face where you are. Oh my god, he's so gorgeous. I hate the fact that he's getting bullied, but he's really pretty and I love him. You looked at him, clearly knocked down on the floor, a few books on his side. Your eyes met with piercing reddish ones, his eyes narrowed as he turns at your sudden appearance. If you hurt him, I'll scream and alert everyone in the library. By your threat, the bullies click their tongue before roughly kicking the guy on the floor and leaving. The raven head one shoving your shoulder on the way. You rub the area where the bully shoved you before turning your attention back to the student on the floor. He looks pretty beaten up. A purple bruise forming on his left cheek. My poor sweet baby. You went towards him and kneeled down, offering your hand. He said nothing, however. Looked at your outreach hand, hesitating for a while before gripping your wrist and helping him stand up. Now that he's standing at his full height, he's actually pretty tall, probably around six feet. His red eyes are going back and forth around the area, back to you, and on a random corner. 
month, we should probably get you to the nurse's office. I'm fine. No need. And with that, he left as quickly as he can. You trail after him, seeing him pack up his things from what seems to be your usual spot before exiting the library. Well, at least my usual spot's open now, but I wonder if they're actually feeling alright. Oh, I feel so bad. Yeah, so now when you encounter him in the classroom, he's got the bandage on his cheek. It's a guy from the library. He's in the same class as me. Why haven't I seen why haven't I noticed him before? When his eyes met yours, they widened a bit before turning away. His focus on the book in his hand, a slight tint of red on his pale cheeks. Maybe this is my chance to get to know him. Okay, and I think the rest is the same. Except for when you choose the different options here. Would you like me to draw you first? I mean, I don't mind. I'm quite confident in my skill of art, he said with a smile on your face. Sol thought for a bit. The offer was quite tempting, but then he remembers the bandage on his face. He shook his head as he took out his own sketch pad and his pencil. No, it's alright. I'd rather draw you for now. You sure? Yes. Why so? Because you're prettier. Uh, uh, I mean, I look like crap. And wait, I didn't see what he got to. I didn't see what he said. I saw like, and you look really gorgeous. And I think it's more appropriate if I draw you, since you're so flawless and ethereal. And <laughs> he's cute. Whoa, 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 whoa! Slow down. What were you saying? That I'm pretty? Yes. Can I just draw you? I just don't like how I look with this bandage on my face, that's all. God, I feel like I'm about to explode. You just gave a small chuckle before letting him do the honors and draw you instead. You sat up straight and fixed your hair as Sol started on his sketch. Red covered his cheeks up to his ears as he tries his best to hide his blushing face behind his sketch pad. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, I love him. The sound of pencil against paper filled the classroom. You on your seat, a soul looks up at you and back on the paper from time to time. Whenever he gazes at you, you saw his eyes go half-lidded as if in a dreamy daze. But you didn't think too much about it. Thank you. What was that? Soul stopped his strokes on his paper and finally locks gaze with you. His sketch pad covers half his face as he speaks. Thank you, Yinny. For helping me back in the library. Oh! It's not a problem. You're in quite a pickle and no one bothered to help you out. I don't know what I'd do if I didn't save you there. Well, you saved me the trouble today. After that, Sol said nothing as he looks at you before continuing on. You swear, a small tint of pink appears on his ears as he keeps hiding half of his face behind his sketch pad. Small conversations were made then and there as he worked while you kept the air afloat. Sorry I wasn't able to make it in time to not get you injured. You started and Sol's eyes just widened at you before shaking his head. Don't worry about it. These types of things are usual for me. The usual for you? He sighed as if the thought alone is such a huge task on his hand while he continues. I get in trouble either way, so what's the point? Solden mumbled something under his breath, the grip on the pencil tightening in his grip before sighing and looking up at you. And that was enough to calm him down and focus and continue on with the sketch, leaving you dumbfounded. Before you knew it, class is over. Sol, however, is not done with his portrait of you as his pencil still makes a few more final touches on his sketch pad. Just a few more touches. There. Oh, he finishes it this time. Can I see? Of course. The soul hands his sketches to you and you gasp. This looks so good. The details and everything. And he's not even done yet? Soul, this looks amazing. How the fuck did you do this? By your compliment, he just rubbed the back of his neck and shrugged a little, a bit embarrassed at your compliment. I love to sketch once in a while. I often draw random people in parks when I go out. You can help but admire him and his work. Can I keep this? I mean, right after our professor grades it, of course. Soul places a hand under his chin, thinking about it. Hmm, not sure. I think I could do better than that one. But I really like this one. He just chuckled. Alright, you can have it once I'm done and our professor grades it. But in return, I get to keep the portrait you make of me, alright? I think that's a fair deal. Sol agreed and you cheered. He gave back his sketch pad and fixed up your things. Sol packed up as well as you both headed out towards the hallway. Do you have a phone? We should exchange numbers and update each other so we can do the next two tasks. Yeah, so the ending here is just the same. So after the spicy scene, it's pretty much just it. Alright, we'll do one more. 
where we don't save him in the library, even though I feel really bad about that one. Find somewhere else to sit, leave the scene. You didn't want to be involved in this any longer. Who knows, you might be the next victim if you stay for too long. Fuck the book, you can come back and read some other time. He turned quickly and left. The smell of iron invaded your nose. You shook your head and sped walk to your table. Fuck, you little shit, you'll pay for that. What's all that noise? Just in time. From the corner of your eye, you spot the librarian going to where the bullies were and a gasp was heard from her lips. Two of you, to the principal's office. And as for you, Mr. Brugmancia, you stay put as I call for the nurse. You can't help but tune in as you pack up your stuff preparing to leave the library. You turn your head and it was in that moment you wish you didn't. There stood a tall boy in black, his eyes red and dull, with dark eye bags under it. His face is swollen and a purple bruise on his left cheek. No, I hate that I didn't save him. But what made your heart stop along with your breathing is the blood on his left hand, a large gash on it. You were too busy staring at his wound, you didn't see him look your way. His gaze started to burn. You looked away, shoving the remaining notes in your bag, zipping it close and sprinting out. Fuck the library, I'll just wait back in the classroom for my next class. Oh, I feel awful that we didn't save him. You look around the classroom before your eyes landed on something, or rather, someone familiar. Piercing red eyes, burning through you. You averted your eyes from his gaze, sweat accumulating from your temple. Shit, it's a guy from the library. I didn't know he's in the same class as me. Okay, and then we just go and get him as a partner. I'm not that confident in my art skills. It's alright, as long as we get to finish the work the professor assigned us. Can I just ask for a favour? Yeah, what is it? Just don't include my bruise. He slightly averted away, refusing to meet your gaze as if embarrassed. He seems to be quite cautious of his appearance. Of course, anything to make you comfortable. Thank you. Plus, I might actually take a while to even finish. Take your time. I feel bad that I didn't save him. I hate this. You can't help but look at the bandage on his face, the purple bruise not fully covering the entire wound, and your eyes then trail to his wrapped hand, blood seeping out of it. Your stomach doesn't feel good. Actually, you don't feel good at all. And Sol noticed your change in demeanor, and the fact you haven't moved an inch on your sketch pad told him something's wrong. Hey, you okay? I... If you're worried about my face, don't mind it. It's nothing to be worried about. But Sol remained quiet, not sure what to do. The best thing he did was pulling his sleeve, trying his best to hide his bandaged hand. There. Or better? You need? You felt fingers under your chin. The next thing you know, you're face to face with Sol, his eyes filled with worry, and his brows were furrowed. At the sudden intimacy, your heart beat quicker than you pulled away. Sorry. It's alright, you didn't mean to stare. No, I mean for leaving you there when you actually needed help. Sol raised a brow as he backed away. You were there? Back in the library, I should have helped you if I knew you were going to get badly injured. I'm such a coward. You gripped the pencil, guilt filling through your bones on what could have been easily avoided and maybe helped out. Hey, it's alright. There's nothing else you could have done during that time. Who would bother to help me anyway? I feel terrible. Say, why didn't you make it up to me by finishing that portrait? Sol tells you with a small smile, trying his best to change the subject and to cheer you up. You said nothing, however, but started slow with the sketch, the guilt still eating you from the inside. The bell rang. Sadly, you weren't done with his portrait yet. Not sure of how it turned out. Can I see it? Uh, I'm not done yet, though. Is that so? Well, I haven't even gotten started with yours. Can you wait until I could finish? I promise it won't take long. Take as much time as you need. You and Sol then packed up. You hurriedly shoved everything into your bag, wanting to leave the room as soon as possible. You rush out, catching Sol by surprise. He quickly grabbed his things as well and tried to catch you in the hallway. You went out as quickly as you could, but Sol was hot on your tail. He eventually caught up to you and grabbed your wrist with his good hand, stopping you in your tracks, eyes still refusing to look at him. Sol sighed and rubbed the back of his head. Hey... You didn't say anything. Sol realized what he did and let go of your wrist, mumbling a soft sorry under his breath and shoving his hands in his pockets as he bit his lower lip. A slight tint of red invading his ears but still determined to talk to you. 
we should try and finish our assignment when we can, so I need to have some way to contact you. Oh, he asked me your number this time. You turned to look at him and thought about it before pulling out your phone. This is just for the sole purpose of the, of the project. Hey, I'd like for us to be friends. Oh, you soft, sweet boy. After what you did to him back in the library? The apparent shock on your face was enough for him to know exactly what you were thinking, and he tilted his head to the side, eyes furrowed, and a small smile on his face. Stop thinking about what happened in the library. I forgive you. In fact, I wouldn't forgive myself if you were in the same position. What was that? I would like us to be friends, you know? You just said that. But why? His eyes softened ever so slightly. Why not? A soft smile appears on his face trying to calm you down, telling you that everything is alright. The tightness in your chest slowly fading away the more you look at him, reassuring that you did nothing wrong. You're a good guy, Song. How about we hang out again tomorrow? Yeah, so this is the part where it's all just the same again. And then you get the spicy scene at the end, and I'm pretty sure that's it. Alright, here's the last CG that I need to get, which is when you ask him to move away from your seat. And then this time, instead of buying him coffee or asking if he wants a hug, we're just going to pick the option where you tell him to just give you your seat. I have no time for your games, just leave me and let me have my seat that you stole. However, he just stared at you. A second pass before returning his attention back to his book. If you really want to sit here, then make me. Either way, I'm already comfortable here, so I'm not leaving. This guy's getting on your nerves. Okay, if he doesn't want to leave, then so be it. Are we going to sit on his lap? Without thinking, you move next. Oh my god. Without thinking, you move to him before plopping yourself down on his lap. This clearly caught him by surprise, for he lets out a sharp gasp, his eyes wide, gripping the book he nearly threw away. Oh my god, he's adorable! Look at his cute little face! Oh, I love the dark eye circles, he makes me so weak. You look behind him with a cocky smirk before setting down your things on the table and went to do your literature report. Oh, he's so cute. He hasn't said anything for a full minute, his body's stiff. Did he stop breathing too? Relax, will ya? You're making it uncomfortable for me and it's hard to concentrate. The breath he was holding was finally let out. He grumbled under his breath and placed his arm beside yours as he watches you go on with your work. Edgar Allan Poe? Yeah, what about it? What a coincidence, my report is about him too, but not on a dream within a dream. What made you choose this poem out of everything else he's written? It was a genuine question coming from him, and he eyes you with curiosity. I just think it's interesting, the way he writes is unlike any other writer out there. Plus I think this poem talks about being uncertain about something. Like about life or about someone's feeling? You trailed off, the ache in your heart suddenly burns within your body. He seems to notice your change in demeanour before opening his mouth. I think that's a good topic to make a report on. Your eyes met his a smile on his face. A chuckle left your lips at his response. Thanks. I'll do my best on it. He realized he was staring for quite a while before looking away, a small red tint invading his cheeks as he avoids your gaze. You smiled and went on with your report on his lap, him finally relaxing underneath you. How about you? What's the poem you picked out from the great Mr. Poe himself? The guy looked up as if thinking before turning to you. Have you read Annabelle Lee? If my memory serves me right, it's that poem about their love for this woman named Annabelle Lee, right? That poem, not gonna lie, has a lot of deep meaning and symbolism to it. Anyone can have multiple interpretations of it. But the main concept, at least in my opinion, is that the speaker loves Annabelle to the point of death and even after death. Yeah, pretty much. And I honestly think it's beautiful. Love? Death. His body laxed, mind somewhere else, but the small smile and the light in his eyes are apparent before his smile turns into a frown. But people refuse to let them be together, as if fate refuses them to die together. Wait, what did he say? He says like, I won't let it happen to me, not again. There's a bit of foreshadowing here. What was that? What? Oh, don't mind me. But, but yeah, th that's my report about... That's, what's my, that's what my report is about. Sorry, I kind of started rambling. No, I don't mind. Thanks for sharing. 
I honestly think it's quite interesting. Also, I didn't think you'd be the type of person to be into romance. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Some time passed, and there was only a few more minutes left before the bell rings. You pack up your things and stood up from your seat, almost forgetting you made some sort of cushion. Almost forgetting you made someone some sort of cushion. Hey, um, sorry for sitting on you like that. That was kind of rude of me. No, no it's alright. Hang on. I'd like for you to stay a bit longer, actually. What was that? Nothing. Your next class is art, correct? How'd you know? It's my next subject. Who knows, maybe we're classmates or just have different teachers. He lets out a sigh, seemingly disappointed by the realization. He packed up his things before heading to the exit. You follow him on the way out. Oh, there's another scene here. Just then, you heard someone calling out your name. You faced to your left and saw none other than Crow, Brittany, and the rest of her group of friends. I see that you did spend your time in the library. I did, how was lunch? Brittany's eyes narrowed. You didn't understand why, but the moment your eyes went to her ruined uniform, you kind of guessed what happened. That has got to be one of the best food fights I've ever been in. The jock behind her exclaimed he didn't seem... Un he didn't seem to be unstained save for a few spaghetti sauce on his jersey, but that didn't seem to bother him. D Daryl, you better shut your fucking mouth before I would do the honours for you. Ah, oh, now Brittany, let's just go to the changing room and ask the principal for an extra uniform, alright? The girl with glasses cuts Brittany off, calming her down in the process. You're right, let's go Jess. Can't believe I have to be late on my next class because of this bullshit. Oh, Gio, it's so good to see you again. You are so pretty. Daryl said nothing, but hid behind the tall, stoic male as both Jess and Brittany left. Sometimes I forget how scary she is. Don't you agree, Gio? Get off me. Sometimes you wonder how the group are even friends, but then again, people don't usually approach your friend group. You often wonder. But then, but then again, it's none of your business to pry. Ignore them. So, back to you, Uni. Oh, right, I actually had to fight someone for my favourite spot in the library. Talk about a pain in the ass. Pro just chuckled his eyes telling you to go on. He shouldn't have gone too far, he just left. You turned around, expecting the green-haired streak. <laughs> expecting the green-streaked-haired male to be there. But to your surprise, he was gone. He's fast. How curious. Do you happen to know who they are? No, I never got to ask his name. Well, you better get off to your next class. We only have a few minutes left before the bell rings. I'll see you soon, Yuni. You wave him goodbye, Crow going forward with Daryl and Geo behind. You scratch your head before heading out to the other direction and onto your next class as the bell rings, echoing through the hallway. You just barely make it out to your ne you just barely make it to your next class. Your professor already on his desk and was slowly bringing out his tools for the lesson of the day. You look around the classroom trying to find a familiar boy. There we go. There. He's situated at the very back of the classroom. Judging from his look, he's been staring at you for a while. You gave him a small smile and a wave. He smiled back with a small wave of his own. Oh. He went to your seat by the window, turning around to face him one more time. His eyes still fixated on you, a hand on his cheek while admiring you. Heat raised up to your cheeks from the somewhat dreamy look on his face. You turn your head to the front, focusing on whatever your professor is talking about. He sits at the back, no wonder I don't quite notice him. Alright, I see if anything happens when you tell him that you, can, you can't you can draw. Ah, okay, so this is the same one where you get the first CG. And I think the other option is the same as the other envy. Oh, he's so cute. Yeah, so this is the one where you draw him instead. And the ending is the same as all the other times. That's, I think that's the majority of the paths that we can get. I love this so much. I love the art style, how they did the backgrounds, how they did the sprites. The story is also really intriguing as well. The character design is gorgeous. I really liked all of the characters they showed. They were, all looked really unique. Soul is definitely my favorite. 
and I'm pretty sure Crow is the other person that you can romance as well. So I'm really excited to be able to play through the full game and check it out. So, uh, I think the dev is uploading it in days though as they work on it since they are primarily solo devving this. They are planning on adding more not safe for work scenes in the future so if you are interested in spicy scenes please consider tipping $5 on their itch page which I've linked in the description below. I had an absolute joy playing this with you. Thank you so much for sitting with me and listening to the story as I explored as many of the possibilities as I could. If you liked the video, please give a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe so you can catch my future videos and leave a comment below if you have any recommendations as to what I should play next. I also stream on Twitch four times a week. Feel free to come and hang out with me and my absolutely wonderful community. We play games like Baldur's Gate and other games that have hot 2D people in them. But until next time, take care.